basically, uh, my name is Scott Guthrie. I uh, uh, work in the developer division at Microsoft. I run uh, a couple of teams um, that build kind of .NET and Visual Studio, uh, specifically kind of the core CLR and our core base class libraries, um, both for desktop as well as the compact framework for mobile. Uh, and then I also build the, run the teams that build uh, ASP.NET, um, Silverlight, WPF, um, uh, IS, uh, Commerce Server, Media Server, and the Visual Studio Tools teams for those for web and client projects. So a few things. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, what I was going to spend uh, kind of the next sort of hour and a half on was uh, going into a dive into Silverlight 3, um, both from if you don't know nothing about Silverlight, hopefully you'll know a lot more at the end. And then also if you do use, have used Silverlight in the past, uh, I'm going to show off a cool new, couple of cool new things uh, that I don't think have ever been shown publicly before um, around our uh, new Sketchflow product. Ooh, yes. Uh, uh, I won't tell you which things are new. But, uh, um, but uh, anyway, hopefully uh, uh, have a bit of a fun time. Please make it interactive. Um, this would be really boring if all I do is talk. So please ask questions along the way. Um, if they're hard questions, I won't answer them, but, uh, uh, but it'll make it lively and, sp and spread it out. Uh, no, please do ask questions along the way. Any questions, fair game, um, and hopefully make it a little bit more interesting. How many people have ever built a Silverlight app? Cool. And a lot of people I can try to convert. Um, uh, so what is Silverlight? Uh, cool graphic. Um, basically, Silverlight, uh, for those of you who don't know, it is a cross-browser, cross-platform uh, plugin. Um, it works on the Mac. It works on Windows. It works on Linux. Uh, and works with all major browsers. And it basically, uh, we've kind of intended Silverlight uh, in the current set of releases to kind of focus on two types of experiences. Uh, one is media ba rich media-based experiences, and the other one is kind of what we call rich internet application experiences. Um, and it basically allows you to use .NET uh, in the browser. It does not require uh, the .NET framework to be installed, so everything's self-contained within about a 4.6 meg uh, download. Uh, and um, hopefully allows you to build some cool stuff. And I'll show some demos of both the runtime, the tool, and I'm going to drill into kind of the actual programming model behind it. Uh, so if you've never approached it, you'll hopefully understand a lot of the basics uh, and kind of see potentially how you could use it in some interesting ways. Um, we shipped the first release uh, less than two years ago now. It's actually about 18 months ago. Uh, the first release is a pretty basic media plugin. Our kind of goal was to get started, get something out there, start the, the adoption process uh, in terms of deployment. Um, we followed up the release um, uh, less about nine months ago with uh, Silverlight 2. This is the first release that was really for programmers and for RIA applications. It included a cross-platform CLR um, as part of it and really kind of started the foundations of kind of the, the, the things that you need to build applications, things like data binding, things like controls, things like layout templates. Uh, version 3 um, is uh, going to be shipping really, really soon. Um, we have our launch, official Silverlight 3 launch event next Friday. Uh, surprisingly, a number of people have asked me, when is Silverlight going to ship? Uh, although I can't publicly say when Silverlight's going to ship, the fact that we have our launch party next Friday. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say more. Um, anyway, so version 3 has a lot of massive, is a pretty massive upgrade. Uh, and I'll talk about a lot of the features here. Um, it is fully compatible with version 1 and version 2. Uh, once it ships, everyone that has version 2 installed or version 1 uh, will automatically upgrade to the, the latest release. And so we expect within uh, a couple of weeks to have kind of the majority of Silverlight users running with the latest version um, and uh, hopefully be able to do some pretty cool things with it. As I mentioned, uh, we actually ship both the Mac and Windows versions. Uh, runs in Safari, runs on uh, Firefox, IE, Chrome, um, and Opera. Uh, and we uh, then partner with Novell to build a Linux version. The Linux version is open source um, and it runs on a variety of different Linux uh, platforms and browsers. And again, as I mentioned, uh, if you don't have Silverlight installed and you go to a site that uses it, you'll get prompted for this nice experience and you can custom tailor it if you want. Uh, basically, once you click it, uh, it is a 4.6 meg download. Uh, version 3 added 0 0.04 in size because uh, uh, we added a few more languages. Uh, but it basically takes about eight seconds to install on a clean machine. does not require rebooting your browser or your system. It uh, does not require any .NET version installed. If you have vanilla Windows XP um, out of the box, it'll just work. Um, and so it's fairly quick to get installed. We've got a couple thousand, there are probably about 10,000 sites that are now live uh, around the world. Um, a variety of big names um, included uh, as part of that. Uh, if you subscribe to, the, to uh, B Sky B um, here in the UK, um, you might have noticed that um, the, the streaming service um, for like the news and, and movies and things are built in Silverlight. Um, 
Uh, we've had a variety of events around the world. This week, actually, we're streaming Wimbledon live. Uh, unfortunately, it's a geoblock, so only in the US. Um, uh, it's through NBC. Um, we're basically streaming it live at three megabits uh, HD video um, on the web. Uh, lots of other sites uh, around the world going live uh, pretty regularly. All this is kind of driving kind of our uh, overall adoption. Um, every month, our adoption curve kind of goes up a couple of points. Um, I think in the UK here, we're approaching 40% of all uh, internet connected devices uh, do have Silverlight installed now. Um, and basically every month it goes by, a few more percentage points happen. Generally, uh, we're pretty much on track for where we thought we'd be from an adoption curve. Uh, we've always kind of expected what we call an S curve to occur, where the first couple percentage points are really painful and hard to get. Uh, and then as more sites go live, more people think, hey, I can go live with it. And you see kind of this S curve shape take off. Uh, we start to gain more and more points per month. And we're kind of starting to get into the vertical part of that S curve, which is about where we wanted to be. Um, and obviously, as more sites come out, um, uh, that adoption will continue to accelerate. Um, so what about Silverlight 3? So um, uh, if you've ever used Silverlight before, one of the core things that we focused on uh, has been media. Um, we support uh, built into Silverlight uh, the ability to stream both uh, uh, on-demand video, so pre-recorded video, as well as what we call live video. Uh, directly within the browser. Um, we support, uh, in the past, this codec called VC1, which is the Windows Media format. Uh, with starting with Silverlight 3, we're adding support for H.264 as well as AAC. Um, it's the same format if you have an iPod or an iPhone uh, that they support, and it's what most mobile devices are now building directly onto the silicon uh, in order to do streaming. Uh, we can play, actually, YouTube videos directly um, unmodified uh, from their site. You're not allowed to technically from a legal perspective, but, but the technology allows it. Um, and you can figure out the URLs, you can do it too. Um, uh, 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 we are GPU hardware accelerated, both for video as well as for graphics. Um, so we do take advantage of hardware. So if you have a netbook like Ian did, um, you can actually stream you know, uh, HD video up to three to five megabits, uh, probably on that little netbook. On faster machines, you can actually stream up to 10 megabits uh, and actually keep up just fine uh, with hardware acceleration. Uh, we have raw bitstream audio video APIs. So the other nice thing is you can actually plug in your own codecs into Silverlight. You can write them in managed code in C Sharp or VB. And so if you have a custom video format or stream format, you can basically just embed it with your application uh, and play it directly. And also in the Silverlight 3 release, we're improving a whole bunch of media analytics and logging support. Uh, I didn't put it up here because it was in Silverlight 2. We also have full DRM support. Um, not the evil DRM, but the good DRM. Uh, uh, specifically, what that means is uh, if you have some content you don't want to share, you, know, you don't want to actually have copied, uh, you can mark the, the content to be DRM protected. The user does not get prompted. Uh, there's no kind of in your face uh, thing, but all the content is actually uh, protected on the wire and at the end device. Uh, you can do that for both live as well as on demand video. 